probably best described as being on two levels. There's a historical and there's a legendary version of the story. Historically, we know for a fact that there was a teacher called Liang Zhan who lived in the middle 1800s and taught in Fatsan in China. From Liang Zhan onwards, we know the history of Wing Chun very accurately because he had students and sons who were recorded in history so that we can trace from him through to Chan Wa Sun, his most prominent student, and of course Yip Man, the character who is the main focus of the film. Grandmaster Yip Man lived from 1893 through to 1972, a very long lifetime. But the film, of course, only portrays a very small part of that life, from around 1935 through to the 1940s. We see him portrayed as a very successful and uh, quite well-to-do landowner. And then we see his very rapid decline due to the invasion of the Japanese, which causes him to live a life of poverty and be forced to use his martial arts in ways that he never imagined he would. In many ways, the period that's not shown in the film, that is the time after he left China, is perhaps the most interesting. And certainly for people like myself who practice Wing Chun, the most important. Had he not left China, had he not been forced to leave China because of war and other issues that were facing him at that time, he may not have ever ended up teaching Wing Chun to the general public and therefore the world would not know the system or the man. If you delve further forward and look at what happened after he left the mainland, it's a very, very interesting tapestry of stories about his various students and the way in which he got involved in teaching the art and the way that Wing Chun has now become such a prominent martial art. Wing Chun as a martial art is very different from other martial art forms. Wing Chun can be best described as human in nature. The way that Wing Chun works is basically it takes science and uses it against our opponent. It takes his energy and it turns it back on him. It uses structures and angles that will give us the best protection with the least amount of effort. It's a close quarters combat system. It likes to use the hands more than the feet, although it doesn't mean that it doesn't use the feet but he uses them in more subtle ways than other martial arts. Overall, Wing Chun can be summarized with one very simple expression. Loi lao hoi sung, lat sao jik tung. When an attack comes towards you, you try to intercept it and meet with it. If it tries to retreat, you follow it, keep the pressure on, and the moment that any contact is lost, you attack. Everything we do is based on economy. From wherever the hands are, they move. From wherever I'm standing, I respond. And every movement I make is at my opponent. What we learn to do in Wing Chun is to counter fire. The moment his technique is launched at us, something is being launched back at him. And that makes it very, very hard to fight a Wing Chun fighter. The most famous piece of training equipment is the Muk Yan Zhong, the wooden dummy. As simple as it appears, it's very, very intricate and it offers us a wide range of possibilities as a result. In terms of what the dummy is really all about, it's to recover. It's teaching you to recover from the simple mistakes that occur because being human beings, we can't always get it right. I like to believe that the version of the dummy form that I've been taught by my instructor is a very, very practical one because my teacher was known for his real life practice in the streets of Hong Kong, learning how to make Wing Chun work where it really counted. The Wing Chun system is based on reality of combat. We don't do things that are flashy, flamboyant, and totally useless in combat. Wing Chun comes from a tradition of Bei Mo. Yip Man himself was very, very fond of testing his skills against fellow martial artists. It was about personal attribute development. That tradition was then filtered through to his students. My teacher in particular, Wong San Leung, he was known as the, the king of the challenge fight. The fights took place on rooftops, in laneways, in alleys, all the skills that we practice for are to get us able to counter somebody who's really trying to hurt us. A real opponent never attacks you the way that you think that they might. You can have whatever ideas in your head that you think you understand about fighting and the real opponent will do something completely different. There often isn't time to see what's happening. There isn't time to think about it. It's got to be instinctive. This is where Chi Sao gives a Wing Chun fighter a real edge over their opponent because Chi Sao enables you to find the gaps without having to know where they are. When Grandmaster Yip Man first came to Hong Kong, his knowledge of Kung Fu of Wing Chun went by largely unnoticed for a time. And suddenly people realized that they had in their midst a great master of martial arts. People suddenly said, well, why don't you start teaching Kung Fu? From that point onwards, slowly Yip Man developed a reputation as an instructor and started taking on students. The four most famous students of all being Liang Xiao, Chu Xiongtin, Lok Yu, and my own teacher, Wong Sun Liu. Wong Sun Leung went on to make Wing Chun very, very famous by virtue of his challenge fights. And those 
rooftop fights and the fame that came from those gradually filtered around the colony of Hong Kong until other people became very interested. One of those was a very young Bruce Lee. So he took him under his wing. And especially for the last 18 months or so before Bruce Lee left Hong Kong for America, he was training on an almost daily basis with my teacher. I recently read that there are as many as 4 million people practicing Wing Chun in the world today. If it hadn't have been for Yip Man making that trip from China, there might not be Wing Chun in the world today. Yip Man has left us an amazing legacy, and that legacy has been enhanced by people like Wong Sun Leung, Bruce Lee, and the like. In the film Yip Man, it really captures Wing Chun in the way that is most real from all the examples that I've seen in the past. The portrayal of Grandmaster Yip Man is outstanding in every respect. It's a film that, as a Wing Chun practitioner, I'm very, very proud to look at as a part of our history and our heritage.